So far we have worked only with options on only one stock, one underlying, one exchange rate. Now we are going to talk about pricing options on more than one underlying, in particular on two underlyings. Moving to the next slide, we'll have still uh, the black shows merta model, which means all the parameters will be constant. So we have two risky assets, S1 and S2, with return rates mu1, mu2, and volatility sigma1, sigma2. Let me talk first in this slide about two equivalent formulations of a model like this. So you can do it like like this up here where if you want S1 and S2 to be correlated and not completely independent, W1 and W2 will have, uh, will have some correlation, uh, rho, let's call it rho, and assumed also to be constant like all the other parameters in the Black-Scholes model. So uh, by that, remember, we mean that expectation of W1 of t, W2 of t, would be equal to rho t for every t. Okay? And when I say rho is a constant, in principle, you could have a more complicated correlation. You could have correlation uh, of the type integral 0 to t, uh, expected value of some rho of s ds. Okay, you could also have that, but, but here we are going to sti stick to the first uh, case when rho is a constant correlation of this type. Okay, so um, this would be a typical model, but sometimes people prefer to model everything with independent Brownian motions rather than correlated Brownian motions. In which case, this second model uh, would be appropriate. Take two independent Brownian motions, B1 and B2, and then the first line looks the same. Just model the first stock the same way as here, except I replace W1 by B1. And then the second stock, model it as sigma 2, which is the sigma 2, but then put rho db1 plus square root 1 minus rho square db2. So effectively what we did here, we just use b1 instead of w1, but instead of w2, we put rho b1 plus square root of 1 minus rho square b2. Right? Then when you take d of w2, you would ha have this rho db1 plus square root 1 minus rho square db2. Okay, I claim that these two models are equivalent. Uh, may, that is, I claim that this w2, in fact, is a Brownian motion and that it has a correlation uh, rho with the w1 or with b1. Okay, that's the claim. Uh, so let's look at that. Is a w... Well, let's look at correlation first. So if you do if you do expected value of w1 of t, w2 of t, uh, then you have uh, rho times expected value of b1 of t squared. Right, when I multiply this and this, and then you have plus square root of 1 minus rho squared, expected value of b1 of t b2 of t. But because b1 and b2 are independent, expected value of a product is a product of expected values, and their expected values are zero, so this, this expectation is just zero. Right? It's, a exp it's a product of expectations, which are zero. And this one, we know this is the variance of Brownian motion, so this is t. So indeed, we get rho t as the uh, as this expectation, therefore correlation is rho. And is W2 Brownian motion? Well, let's remember the, let's recall the uh, definition of Brownian motion. It starts with zero because both of these guys start with at zero. Uh, it uh, is continuous in time because both of these are continuous in time. Uh, it's um, it has normal distribution, because both of them do, with zero mean. It has independent increments, because both of them do. 
so the only remaining thing is to find the, the variance, uh, but that's a similar computation as, as here. If you do, the since these two guys are independent, the variance is going to be the sum of the variances, uh, which means it's going to be, so I'll just write, let's say here, variance of W2 uh, of T is going to be, with variance, rho goes out as a square, rho squared, variance of d1 plus this square root squared is going to be 1 minus rho squared variance of d2 of d. Okay, but these are t, both of these variances are t, so you have rho squared t plus 1 minus rho squared t, rho squared and rho squared we cancel and just get t. Uh, which is the variance of Brownian motion. So, so indeed w2 is a brown motion and it has correlation rho with, with the w1 that's why these two models are equivalent okay the first two lines and these uh, so okay so this is just for your knowledge if you if you read uh, this literature uh, on your own uh, sometimes people prefer to write it in this form uh, usually in finance journals in mathematics journals, people prefer to work with independent brain emotions and do it this way. And you can do this for more than two stocks. Uh, you can, th this what we are doing here really is uh, an orthogonal transformation, applying an orthogonal matrix on, on uh, B1 and B2 to get W1 and W2. Uh, you can do more higher dimensional orthogonal matrix applied to independent brown emotions to get correlated brown emotions with a given correlation. I'm not going to do that in this course, but it's, kind of, it's basically the same idea. This is just a special case with in dimension 2. Okay, so that's the model. Let's go on. Oh, this is going to be very similar to what we did before, but just to be complete, let's do it. The wealth process corresponding to trading in these two stocks and the bank account is going to be number of shares in S1. So pi 1 and pi 2 are amounts in the stocks. So pi 1 over S1 is number of shares in S1 times change in S1 plus number of shares in S2 times change in S2. Then the remaining money goes to the bank x minus pi 1 plus pi 2, that's how much is left to the bank, over b is the number of units in the bank times the change in the bank account. Okay, b is the bank account. If you replace ds1 by what we had in the previous slide, and ds2 with what we had in the previous slide, and db over b is rdt, you would get this. Okay? Which is similar to what we had before, except we didn't have the pi the two terms, right? The terms with subscript two. And then when we change to the pricing probability, we want this to be a, a martingale when discounted, which means before discounting, we want RxdT. It would disappear once we discount, but before discounting, we want this. And then we would just change Brownian motions to W1Q and W2Q. Uh, here you'd have, you would have pi 1 sigma, sigma 1, pi 2 sigma 2. Okay, uh, and uh, if you compare this to this, then uh, for that to, to, for these two things to be equal, we need to have this w i q is w i plus t times mu i minus r over sigma i. Okay? which is the same formula we had before, uh, how to change the brown motion to, brown emo to something which will be brown motion under, uh, under the pricing probability. Okay, the, same, the same formula, brown motion plus the uh, sharp ratio times t. And so that's, that's the probability under which we are going to price. Girsanov theorem still works the same. Girsanov theorem says, there exists a probability Q uh, under which these WIQ processes are indeed Brownian motions. Okay? 
So Gestenov theorem works for a high dimensional case and actually also says and they keep the same correlation. Right? The correlation, if the original Brownian motions have correlation rho, then the new then the Brownian motion under the new probability also have correlation rho. Okay. <coughs> so okay. So that's the wealth process. This is uh, WIQs, which means that in our model, uh, let me write it here, which means that uh, DSI under Q is just going to be RSI dt plus uh, sigma i s i d w i t. Okay, I'm not going to write t's. Exactly the same as we had uh, before. You just replace mu i's by r by the risk free rates. 